very much. Good, Ms. Uh, Concorda. Um, first of all, um, I want to thank the, uh, the day that we, there wasn't that many of us on it, on the Zoom call the day that we had the briefing uh, to the officials uh, for the, uh, uh, the, that morning that we had the briefing on the planning bill um, there a week or two ago on the Zoom calls. Um, planning, I think, in my own opinion, is in a total mess in this country. And you can bring in all the legislation you want in the world. Um, but at the end of the day, I better go over here to the low speaker. Um, but if, at the end of the day, if you, if you, um, it depends on what planning authority, because there is inconsistency in planning. That's the first thing. Um, depends on who's the director of planning. Depends on who's over the ordinary planners. Some people within it could have a vendetta that they don't want to see rural housing going on. It is absolutely crazy what's going on. In the west of Ireland, we'd be dealing, we're on borders of different counties. And every authority is different. You have some of them that they will, all, all anyone wants to know when they're going for planning is, if you have a pre-planning meeting, is that you go in and uh, tell you the pitfalls, or they explain some pitfalls to you in a pre-planning meeting. They look at the, the, the project that you're looking at, um, and that the, you try and see how do you resolve the issues to make it compatible with everything that's required. But some planning authorities have a, a system that they don't want to see houses in rural areas, and there's one of them in the west of Ireland. They don't want to see uh, businesses coming into their county, and one person can dictate the whole pace in that county. I know of a county at the moment where there were six or eight houses built years ago, at the time of the, the bang. There's sewerage, there's water, there's footpaths, there's everything. Ah, oh, but I didn't now comply with the county development plan. Like, how in the name of God do you square that circle? Well, well the county development plan has moved on. We need houses. We have to have a bit of cop on, not have a vendetta about planning. And there are some authorities that are very common sense, helpful, work with you. That's all anyone is asking for. And you either are entitled to a dean or you're not, one or the other. Um, in relation to on board Panola, on board Panola, it's chaos as far as I can see, because I know people, young couples that were trying to build house and some one might put in an objection to on board Panola. Jesus, like, we write a letter and you get the thing back. Oh, yeah, they'll be coming back to you. We'll, we're, we'll be looking at that when we get to it. That's all you get. These are young couples trying to build a house. And what I want to know is from department down, and is there a message to onboard Planola? Because if you look at the stats, nearly every one of rural houses has been banged if it goes into onboard Planola. And is there a vendetta within the department we're getting rid of one-off housing? Because I will tell you one thing, if there is, we need to change a lot. We're in a housing crisis at the moment. First of all, someone in the rural area provides their own site. Second of all, they're not looking for lights. Thirdly, they're not looking for sewerage. Fourthly, they, thanks be to God, the electricity came around the whole Ireland, so they're not looking for uh, new electricity. Fourthly, thankfully, we have, we have roads in all parts of the country. They're not looking for a new road to be put into an estate. Fifthly, They'll do a, they give a contribution to local amenities in a local area, but they don't get, there's no footpath. The, you build your own walls around your house and you do everything, and you give actually three metres in case the road to be ever widened. And there's this mentality that we try and get rid of this. Oh, look, it mightn't be climate friendly. Well, let's just admit to one thing that the furthest house down the road will always be the furthest house down the road. And if you're building before it, well, does it really matter? We need to make sure that we uh, are proactive in that. And the planning guidelines that will come out of this bill, I would worry about them for the likes of the one-off housing. Um, the dog in the street knows that over the last 10 or 12 years, like the prime time programme was no shock to a lot of people. Because what's going on in this country is just absolutely disgusting. There's, 
There's people in the name of the environment and in the name of different things objecting. Politicians objecting. Uh, thankfully, I'm not one of them. I never objected in my life, tent, to be quite frank about in the line of housing or anything like that. Because I believe that people need houses. Um, but we need, in my opinion, we have a shortage of houses. We need to start limiting who can object to these projects. Like someone below on Cork objecting to someone above in Galway. Sure, what business is it of theirs what's built above in Galway? But the thing that has opened the door to all the objections and all the problems in planning, in my opinion, and if you go back and look at it, where did this all start? Is the Habitats Directive. Because it brought in EIAs, appropriate assessments, screening out. Every single, whether you're building a road, whether you're trying to do a port, whether you're trying to do a bit of work within the field, whether you want to build a house, whether you want to extend an airport, no matter what you're doing in this country now, everything screening out, EIA, appropriate assessment. And if a government wants to build houses, in my opinion, and if you look at what Minister Ryan done, the time he wants to put in his jet engines for in the different places, they was a part of the Habitats Directive that the government were able to sideline. That's what was done. There's no point in dressing it up different. All that was sidelined because it was an emergency, because we could run out of electricity. And if housing is an emergency in this country, you'll have to do the same, in my opinion. Because no matter what happens, you're going to have these basically serial objectors going into the courts, holding it up. Because this is the game that goes on. Goes into the council, they'll make an observation or they'll do something. Then, if the council grants it, it goes to on board Panola. It's flapping around there for a year anyhow, or maybe more, maybe two years. If you're a one-off house, it's got only knows when you'd get a reply back. And then you can turn around and sure, we'll run into the courts. And the courts, and we have to say it straight out, Anyone, the, when you see court cases going in, people going in, and the court saying, oh, well, now we'll have to pay for Johnny and Mary because they're objecting, but like, still, Johnny, the builder like, seems to have all the money in the world. You swear that a checkbook the whole time. Like, that doesn't work, in my opinion. And yes, if it's serious grounds, there's the Aris Convention and stuff like that. <coughs> but um, in general, a lot of the objections to stuff is spurious. And they're using the Habitats Directive, and no one can see this. Forestry, another one. You can go to all the different categories. Bogs, another one. Burnamona, that's what closed. Every single thing you look at in problems and not being allowed in planning is the Habitats Directive that you have to adhere to and it was signed in by our now president, Michael D. Higgins, in 1997, and he told everyone, ah, there would never be a bother. We see now, and this is the problem with bad legislation that's not scrutinized, that comes into a country, and it's down the road that it bites you in the ass. Because it, what it has done is, it came in, it had a period of time of bidding in, and the environmentalists got a hold of it. And to be quite frank about it, they're nearly stalled in the country. I see Loch Finch in it. A third lock below, that's designated as a special area conservation. And was, there was emergency powers where Scotland County Council went to use. But the habit has directive trumped it. It went out, it was below on the courts there. European law trumped it. You had to do your screening out, your appropriate assessment, your all this. By the time you do that, by the time you go for planning, by the time you go to on board Panola, and by the time you have the courts, you'll have lost houses in the lives of them turlofs, you'll have lost people, you'll have lost a community, and you'll have lost land. Now, is that good system or good legislation? And, and will anyone do anything about it? I went to a, I went to a sort of a, a re-look at it one day. I, I was asked to do my part from the TCCA. And I was well off, I went home counting cattle. 
because I gave me tuppence worth, and then went on to something else. That was it. That was the look at it. Nothing changed. The Department of Environment was doing it, or the National Parks was involved in it. I'm not blaming them for the simple reason we were to, it was a full overvalue of it in a heap of countries. <laughs> and all I'd done was wasted a full day looking into a screen the time of the Zoom or the time of COVID, uh, wasting my time. And the one thing I would say to you, Minister, is, and I think the government needs to come clear on this, I fully support houses being built. That's the first thing. I fully support fast-track houses being done. Because we cannot be talking about not having houses on one side and then blocking everything on the other side. It doesn't add up. Either we're going to do it or we're not. I fully support that a government is trying their best to get houses, but the way we're, we're tangled up in knots at the moment. And I think, and no insult to, to the civil servants, but the more the right paperwork, the more we seem to get caught up in, in knots. Because there's something always to bite you. And the first thing I would say on that legislation, will we get through the Habit Hats Directive? The, the, there's a 15 kilometre zone, but now you have to do screening out EIA. You go to most places now. Go into Galway. You have Loch Carab right beside you. We see the Galway Outer Bypass. 20, Noel Grealish said here yesterday, 26 years, on the go. And we're still no further. So, can we realistically do a piece of legislation that says, this is gone, this is gone, this is gone, and that it's foolproof or bulletproof when someone brings it to the court? That's the big question. And I, am fear I believe that the first step in this, in any planning bill, is that we should have gone back to Europe and renegotiated parts of that Habit Heads Directive. Because the, the, there's parts in it, and there's another one coming in, the Nature Restoration Law. And I spoke to you about that, in fairness, the day of the thing. You said you were mindful of it. But it's another piece of legislation that's going to put more paperwork on top of the whole thing. And at the moment, there's county development plans or local area plans and all of that crack being done. But do we want to make sure that we have the piece of legislation right? Because all I'm fearful, I'd love to see the piece of legislation going through, on one condition, that first of all, civil servants above in Dublin recognise that the people in rural Ireland have to live in it, work in it, and that they're entitled to have a house in it. That if you come from a farm, you cannot go 10 miles away and wander to the cow calf. You have to be able to live on your farm. And there's another problem, TII or whatever you want to call them, the Transport Infrastructure Ireland. They're objecting to everything they can. Well, sorry, but it's not my fault where I was born if, was, if they decided to put a road later on that brings you to Dublin, Cork, Limerick or wherever. And if your father or mother were there, and some of the houses that they might be in might be in poor repair. And if you want, there was always an underwritten rule that you could come out to a share, what we would call a shared driveway. But now there seem to be objections to the lot TII. And the minute TII object, goodbye getting planning, the council will run a mile. It's nearly like a, a, a going after them, the way they're going on. They will not stand up to anybody in TII. And there seems to be someone within Constantly watching, and no matter where it is, the objection will win. That's not the way you look after people. It has to be done sensible. Is there sight lines? Are you coming out the same driveway as people that came out for the last 100 years? Yes or no? And if you are, there shouldn't be an objection. But I think, and I spoke to your minister before about this, I would ask you to put something into legislation to help those people. Didn't? Hundreds of thousands of houses. But it's the viability of farms and it's the viability of communities. Small communities that we don't want to see people being pushed into areas in relation to um, being able to do their work. And it's a very solvable one. They'll use the old trick and they'll be on about safety. Well, how did Daddy and Mammy come out for the last 50 years? 
and they didn't get the nose cut of them from driving out on the road. But now Johnny, the young fella, or Mary, the young girl, Jesus, this, this is under health and safety. And like, if you added a bit onto the back of the house, or had a granny flash, they were still going to come out. This is the stupidity of what's going on. Um, I would like you to comment back about what we would call national framework planning. Is this bill, and I think there's a section, you know, is it 22 or 26 or something, about national, the national planning framework. And will it affect any part of this? Will it affect one-off housing? Will it affect the ordinary person that's living in the rural area? I support, I support getting houses built in the cities, in the large towns. I support that. Because we, we kind of keep talking about houses here. For the, and the last four or five years, and I've heard nothing about houses. Every Wednesday night we'll have a motion about housing. Renting, housing, something about housing every week. But I, you will never solve a problem until you put bricks and mortar and concrete together and build it. We can talk about it all we want. And yes, we are getting some built. But if you look at the amount of houses that's held up from objections and through the planning process at the moment, it's ferocious to actually take a lot of pressure off right around this country. And the one thing, and I'm going to finish then, and I'm going to, I don't need to use all my time, the one thing I will say to you is civil servants in Dublin, you might be used to coming in on a dart or a loose or whatever, will think that people have to live in different areas. I my fault where I was born, don't look down on me. Just acknowledge that we keep a little piece of Ireland going that pay taxes, that might keep a small shop going, that might keep a local national school going, that might keep a local football team going. And that word community that keeps that going. And do not try and decimate that by this theory that's in the head, that we should cluster everyone together. Because just think, how much does it cost? Irish Water Ireland at the moment, able to cater for the amount of treatment plants they have at the moment. That means enough money. It's going to take a good few years. And I'm not giving out about them, but like you're not going to do every treatment plant in Ireland in the next five years or the next 10 years. It's not going to be done. And when the big bust of rain comes, bang, you have to let storage off. That's it. And you can be as nice and as environmental as you want, but that's reality. You've got to let it go. So the big bust of storage will go into a river, and that'll happen. And it'll go into the sea, and that'll happen. And you know, we think that we're that this will never happen. We don't want, it's like not wanting to talk about something that is happening in reality, but we're afraid to say that it happens. That's reality. If we don't do that, it will come up everyone's toilet. Simple as that. It will back up everywhere. It will come up on the manholes and roads. So it has to be done. And they're not going to have enough capacity in all these towns that's building up, because the more houses you build, the more infrastructure you need. The more houses you build, the more roads you need into it, you need the infrastructure of sewerage systems, that takes time. You don't put that together overnight. You need schools, you need all the different things that go around making an area. And the other thing I'd say to you about the one-off housing, just think of one thing. At the moment, the, the, the department and the Department of Education and the Department of Environment and all the different departments have their heads raked, wondering, if we build more houses there, we'll have to put in a school and we'll have to put in this, this, this and this. Because you have to facilitate, next thing there'll be parents in uproar saying, well, we need this and we need this school tomorrow and prefabs are no good. But just think of one thing. They're built already in the rural areas. They're there. The infrastructure for what we need. And we can cater for more. So don't be trying to hammer us on the rural basic, the rural planning guidelines. That's the one thing I am concerned about, and I do support you, Minister, in trying to get a planning bill through, providing that it doesn't affect us in the rural areas. I do support the housing, to get more housing done and do it quicker, and bypass some of the stuff that's going on. Because these people that's objecting to everything cannot be listened to. Um, it has to be drove on. And I would ask you to comment on the Habitats Directive, because I believe no matter what department in this country at the moment, they're caught, it's like being caught in, in, in chains. 
with what you have to go through. Gurmagud.